Love is a funny thing. They say being bonded to someone forever in holy matrimony can be one of the greatest things that can ever happen to a person. Sharing your life forever with your soulmate. But love, like all things, has its downsides. And like they always say, hell hath no fury like a woman scorned. Lorena Bobbitt. Marriage. A beautiful bond between two souls, sharing their lives together in holy matrimony and happiness. Now every marriage has its problems. Every marriage has its quarrels. And sometimes this can be a bit too much for some people. At four in the morning, on the 23rd of June 1993 in Manassas, Virginia, the happily married couple, John and Lorena Bobbitt, were asleep in bed. When suddenly, John feels a sharp pain and wakes up, only to realise that his wife Lorena had chopped his penis off with a steak knife. John goes into a little bit of a panic, like any man would, and he starts screaming the house down while holding the wounded area in an attempt to stop the bleeding, which there was a lot of, and looks up to see his wife Lorena standing at the bottom of the bed, holding his severed penis. Lorena, in her panic, grabs her car keys and John's Game Boy for some reason and with penis still in hand, runs out into her car and drives off into the night. She's panicking, she's freaking out, she has absolutely no idea what to do and then she realises that she is still holding John's severed penis in her hand. She then rolls down the window of the vehicle and throws the penis out of the moving car into a nearby field. Lorena drove to Jana Basuti's house, who was Lorena's boss at the nail salon where she worked at the time, and told Jana what she had done. Jana then obviously called the police and told them what had happened. An ambulance was sent for John, and the police were sent for Lorena. John is obviously in quite a predicament, and he is being rushed to surgery so that they can try to reattach his penis. We can rebuild him. We have the technology. There was just one problem. They didn't have his penis. The police then had to form a search party and get the flashlights out, searching the side of the road and all of the adjoining fields, so that they could try to find John's penis, so that it could be reattached. After a long search, the police eventually managed to find John's penis, but they had no way of putting it on ice to take it to the hospital, so the cops ran across the road to a nearby 7-Eleven and made a carrier for the penis by putting ice in a big bite hot dog box. <laughs> After a nine and a half hour operation, John's penis was successfully reattached, and Lorena Bobbitt was arrested and charged with unlawful and malicious wounding. Now then... How did we get here? Well, it would turn out that the Bobbitt's marriage wasn't as happy as you would think. I'm, I'm, I'm sure you're all very shocked to hear that. And all of this came out during the trial when Lorena Bobbitt was giving her reasons for why she did what she did. And this trial was televised almost as much as the O.J. Simpson trial. The seven-woman, five-man jury heard the story of how Mrs. Bobbitt ran from their apartment with Mr. Bobbitt's penis in her hand and how the organ was reattached in a nine and a half hour operation. During the trial, Lorena fully admitted to doing what she did. She didn't deny it for a second. So why, why did there need to be a trial? Why, why did a further discussion have to be had? But the heart of the testimony came as the defense tried to prove that Lorena Bobbitt was justified in doing what she did. Yes. Lorena's defense lawyers were trying to argue that what Lorena did was a justifiable form of self-defense against a man who was asleep. The reasons that Lorena gave for doing what she did was that John was apparently an extremely abusive husband and Lorena detailed in court a lot of the horrible things that he had actually done to her and in doing so, a few more specific details of that fateful night started to emerge. The way the story goes is that John had come home that night from a night of heavy drinking with his friend Robert Johnston. Robert Johnston went to sleep on the couch in the living room 
and John went to bed where Lorena was sleeping. They ended up having sex. Now, John says that the sex was consensual. Lorena said that the sex was not consensual. And then afterwards, John fell asleep. And then we all know what happened. <laughs> Lorena claimed that rape was a regular occurrence. John very often would have sex with her without her consent. John apparently would also beat her quite regularly. A lot of witnesses who were friends or acquaintances of Lorena actually came forward to give evidence in court saying that they observed Lorena's behaviour to be signs of someone who was in extreme emotional distress. Her depression was very noticeable. Her sadness was very noticeable. And occasionally when she was doing my nails, she would burst into tears. And even Lorena herself would describe some of the horrible things that she went through while she was married to John. Lorena Bobbitt's most poignant testimony came when she described a night of forced anal sex. I was with my stomach down, and he, uh, he, he did it. He, 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 um, he, he have uh, anal sex. Did he ask you if he could? No, no. Did you give him permission to? Their next door neighbor testified to what he called sounds of painful sex coming from the Bobbitt's apartment the night of the incident. Throughout the trial, many feminist groups came out in support of Lorena and backed her up over the fact she chopped off a man's penis and of course they did. Of course they came out and showed support for her. This is a woman who chopped a man's penis off. Something that every feminist dreams of doing. Of course they held her up there like she was a god. So Lorena confessed to everything that she had done and provided her reasons for doing so. But surely, disfiguring a man in such a horrible and horrific way is something that the courts would never be able to let slide, no matter the reasons behind it. Surely, surely this person would never be able to get away with doing such a horrible thing. In the case of Commonwealth of Virginia versus Lorena Lenore Bobbitt, criminal number 33821, we, the jury, find the defendant, Lorena Lenore Bobbitt, not guilty of malicious wounding as charged in the indictment by reason of insanity. What? The judge had Lorena Bobbitt hospitalized for psychiatric evaluation. Released weeks later, Lorena Bobbitt was soon to be divorced, but happy and hopeful about the future. Well then. As a result of Lorena's multiple rape accusations against John, John was arrested and charged with sexual assault. However, John himself was also found not guilty because both of these cases were just a massive case of he said, she said. So what became of them? Well, after the incident, both of them did an awful lot of TV interviews and newspaper interviews, just sort of trying to make the most of that 15 minutes. Lorena ended up remarrying and having kids and she set up a foundation for the prevention of domestic abuse. Okay. She did end up in the news again after she got arrested for beating up her mother, but apart from a couple of TV interviews, she's maintained a pretty low profile. John, however, went the opposite route and tried his best to stay in the public eye for as long as he could. While living in Vegas, John ended up bumping into Ron Jeremy, of all people, who ended up casting him in a porno called John Wayne Bobbitt Uncut. And there was even a sequel to this porno called Franken penis. Yes, you can watch both of these on Pornhub. He actually ended up giving an interview from the set of one of the pornos he was working on. Not fully healed yet, but you know, I still can have sex and um, it doesn't leak, you know. It's not, it's not crooked. He also did an appearance on Howard Stern to talk about how he was going to get penis enlargement surgery. Here with us right now. On the phone. No, 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 in person. In person. John Wayne Bobbitt and Dr. Rosenstein, who is going to perform the operation on John Wayne Bobbitt. I think this is insane. In 1994, John was arrested for felony battery because he hit an exotic dancer and he was sentenced to 15 days in jail. Then in 1998, John appeared on WWE's Monday Night Raw. <laughs> for some reason. In 1999, John received probation for his role in a theft at a store, but he was sent to prison in 2003 for violating his probation conditions by beating up his new wife. John was then arrested again in 2004, twice, for beating up his wife again, twice, before they finally got a divorce. <laughs> John was then also hospitalised in 2014 after severely breaking his neck in a motoring accident. 
There have been some semi-recent TV appearances from both of them. I was looking like, okay, well, how do I self-terminate right now? I just wanted to end it. But the, but the major one, the major one was when Lorena Bobbitt appeared on Steve Harvey's show. Joining us now, please welcome Lorena Bobbitt. A standing ovation for chopping a man's dick off. Just a question for all the men watching right now. You know, this is this is just between us guys. Do you have a wife or a girlfriend? Did you argue with them today? Did you maybe call them a few names and upset them? Are they are they really really angry at you right now? Sleep tight. It's Count Dankula on YouTube. Everybody should subscribe.